At their fourth attempt, Kent claimed victory in the Royal London One Day Cup for the first time, sending Middlesex to their third defeat from five in a low-scoring contest in Canterbury, the home side winning by 46 runs. Put in, Kent lost Daniel Bell Drummer to the first legitimate ball of the match from Toby Roland Jones. The batsman out for a golden duck after back to back hundreds. About the only time Bat was on top of ball throughout the day was when Sam Northeast and Joe Denley put together a second wicket partnership of 52. Although that should not have been the case, Northeast badly let down in the slips by Adam Voges. Denley did not have such fortune, his attempt to go after Roland Jones, seeing him pick out Voges at mid-wicket after making 19. Sean Dixon joined his captain and these two made steady progress through the next 10 overs in adding 44 more runs, Kent closing in on their 100 in the 23rd over. But that was when Dixon top edged to pull off James Franklin to be held by Roland Jones after making 29. Northeast had made a patient half century when he too fell on 55. Another batsman to use the top edge of his bat to send the ball skywards off the bowling of Ravi Patel. Alex Blake was unable to continue his fine recent form as on two he nicked off to Franklin. When Darren Stevens also perished for 18, Kent had slipped to 129 for six, leaving it to Wayne Parnell to play his shots. He dominated a seventh wicket partnership of 34 with Adam Rouse. But on 32, the South Africans sent a full toss from Davi Milan to Tom Helm in the deep. Matt Coles came and went quickly, a fine catch by Voges, who had been very well placed in the slips. Rouse was out for nine, John Simpson with his fourth catch of the day, a second wicket in successive overs for Helm. That had Kent on 173 for nine, and the 19 runs from the last man Mitch Clayden proved to be crucial, he hitting the only six of the innings. Roland Jones ended with figures of three for 35 as he yorked Clayden, he and James Treadwell adding 27 for the last wicket to take the total up to 200. That looked as if it would be difficult to defend until Parnell had Milan edging to Treadwell before he also removed Nick Gubbins' LBW four balls later to leave Middlesex on 11 for two. That left a rebuilding job for Nick Compton and Voges to do but both got their heads down striking the occasional boundary in a stand worth 38 runs which had the game nicely balanced. It was still so, even when Voges offered Stevens a brilliant return catch to depart for 21. Wonderful reactions from the 41-year-old bowler. Simpson was sold a bit of a dummy by Compton to be run out, and that had the visitors on 60 for four. Compton and new man Franklin stuck it out for a dozen overs to bring up three figures for their team, and for a moment at least it looked as if the visitors would, in the end, make the most of their bowling unit's efforts. But the wicket of Compton, mistiming a slog sweep off Treadwell to offer Coles a catch after making 37, began a collapse which soon had Kent as firm favourites. Treadwell's 10 overs cost just 29 runs, while leg spinner Denley picked up crucial wickets against his former county. Ryan Higgins edged a slider behind. Roland Jones was bang in front. And Franklin was sensationally caught by the diving bowler whose six crucial overs brought him figures of three for 20. Franklin was out for 33. 78 was still needed as James Fuller and Helm came together, the former clearing the rope in the same Denley over. But with a total on 144, Clayden had Fuller held by Northeast on 11. And the match was wrapped up 10 runs later when Parnell bagged his third wicket with the third caught and bowled of the innings. Patel the man out. Middlesex then were dismissed for 154 and that meant a loss by 46 runs. Next up for the Londoners is a game in Radler to get Glamorgan, a must-win match on Wednesday, while Kent will hope to stay on an upward curve in Bristol against Gloucestershire on the same day. <laughs>